Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today, I wanna to work on easy bookmarks. And you know me, I love oceans. So I am using a six by nine Arches cold press paper. And you can stop the video to write down the Daniel Smith paints that I used. And I used washi tape, it's a brand, and I used it to tape off my corners and my edges. And I estimated where to put the tape out. Uh, you can measure it out, but I just estimated it. And uh, then I began by using a flat wash. I am using a three-quarter brush, flat brush, Princeton Aqua Elite. I love it. Um, they carry a lot of water and I can put down what I need. So I started off by putting water on where the wave is gonna be. I didn't put everything down because I wanna have some white areas blocked out. And then I began to lay in some of the lightest areas and then some of the darker areas of the wave. And I tend to paint a light first layer, then I'll go back in and make myself be very bold. So uh, you have to get to know yourself when you are painting and what are some of your habits. And sometimes you're gonna challenge those habits and you're gonna change how you do things just so you can grow. So anyway, I am moving on to my sand now. And this is a French ochre by Daniel Smith. What I love about Daniel Smith's paints is they granulate, meaning when I put paint on my paper and you can see things are pretty wet, the, the paint is going to kind of fall into portions of the paper and it has this really neat texture and look. Daniel Smith's paint granulate better than some other paint brands. So that's just one thing I want you to know about Daniel Smith. So as I worked with the sand, I used a little bit of permanent orange yellow and then I used a little bit of a dark brown and a blue. I used some of my ultramarine blue to create a shadow underneath of the wave. So I am, I'm enjoying my time painting this. I'm looking at uh, how I can add in my shadows and what colors do I like. Have fun with your palette. Have fun trying out different colors. So as I tested out my blues and my browns, and just a hint, blue and brown actually makes a beautiful black. It's almost like a grayish black, but try mixing blues and browns together and see what types of blacks and grays you can come up with. So as my paint was starting to dry, I did this in two, two washes. Um, but as my paint was starting to dry, I laid down the darkest points of that wave before I went back up to do a second layer on the top. And the top, I decided to go ahead and really put some bold colors in there. And that's me, that, that's just my um, taste. And so as I did that, I uh, remembered where I have some of this white blocked out and I went in later and I used a Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and I will have that in my description for this video. And what I love about Dr. Martin's is uh, it's untouchable. When I put the white in there, there's nothing that is gonna move that paint. If I was using white gouache, which I love, um, it doesn't, I have to use it straight out of the tube bore where Dr. Martin's, I don't have to. And the Dr. Martin brand, I can add a little bit of white into it, or excuse me, water into it. And it, I'll water it down a tiny bit, so I don't have to use it straight. Uh, but I love it because it really sticks in there. So anyway, I'm gonna finish off with my blues here, and then I'm going to grab a brush uh, after I add these shadows in um, and I'm gonna splatter some of my bleed proof white because it's a wave that's crashing and a wave that's crashing needs splatter. So let me go to where I'm adding these sh uh, shadows in. Where the shadows are, I'm using the same blues uh, to add in shadow colors. A little bit of purple would be beautiful in there too. And then a little bit of neutral. 
um, or I have a lunar black and I will use those to add in more of the shadows and define them later on in the painting. Now you can see how incredible this bleed proof white is. And when I am dipping my brush in, I am scraping. I'm rubbing my brush on the sides of the paper in addition to painting fine lines. And by scraping it, it what it does is it causes the paint not to paint a very thin line. It kind of skips over some of the bumps in the paper and that's using your paper to your advantage. A cold pressed paper has bumps in it. So when I've got paint on my brush without a lot of water, I can scrape it and rub it and it'll actually create a texture. And you can see what those uh, splashes, the splatters that I added in there, how beautiful those are. I'm not adding a ton of detail in for this white. You can see that I'm uh, scraping, I'm throwing it on there fast, I'm uh, doing a few fine lines to define things and then once I do this I'm going to go back in and I'm going to define a little bit more of the darks and as I do that like the top of the wave comes down and right before that white is going on all that foamy white the colors of the blues will get darker and then it also will be darker underneath of that wave right at the beach in the sand. So I'm gonna darken that up a little bit and what it's gonna do is make the painting pop. It's gonna make that wave look more three-dimensional. So those are just a few little tricks that you can use when you're uh, creating waves. Remember where the shadows are. Just go watch the waves for a few hours. That's so relaxing for me, but I'll take a lot of photos or I'll watch it so I can see where these shadows are. So I've spent a lot of hours looking at shadows in waves just so I can have fun and play and just add them in randomly like I am right now. If you are finding value in my video, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. It will help me in boosting uh, my channel and getting it out there. And I so enjoy being with you and would love to see you again at another lesson of mine.
the final details that I add into the painting, I am trying to add the minimum amount of detail. If you add too much in, you have to go through the entire painting and add detail everywhere. So I want your eye led to these crashing waves. And for these bookmarks, that's what you're gonna see is I have some very strong darks and lights where I want your eye to look. And uh, then I also created a little bit different shadow on the bottom. Um, this was a lot of fun. And it took me about, I'd say 20, 25 minutes for me to paint it. I'm challenging myself to try to do a painting in 10 minutes. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I love challenging myself. Let me know in the comment section what you enjoyed. Let me know anything that you want me to as far as what you would like to see us paint. If you have any questions on the materials, the lights, my office setup, let me know. And I'll give you guys a tour soon for my office so you could see some of the new ways that I've set things up that save me space, save me money. We all want to do that. So I have plenty more bookmarks coming up. Good to see you guys this time and I will see you next time.